Welcome to my latest free motion challenge, Becoming Successful with Swirls. I'm Angela Walters from Quilting is My Therapy, and this is the first lesson in a six week video series where I'll show you different swirl designs, how to use them on your quilts, and how to quilt some fun variations in other areas. Incredibly versatile, but slightly frustrating to learn, swirl free motion quilting designs can help give your quilt a custom look. In this video, we're gonna get cozy with the basic swirl design. It's the shape that makes up all the different swirls that we're gonna learn through the series. And I'll also show you how to quilt the swirl hook design. It's like a basic swirl with a little flare. You'll also learn how to use your quilting designs to help highlight elements of your quilt or hide them depending on how happy you are with how they turned out. Well, we have a lot to cover, so let's get to it. If you're quilting along with me on the challenge quilt, before we can start quilting, we have to do just a little bit of marking. Using your favorite marking pen or pencil, mark four lines to divide the quilt in five sections. It doesn't have to be anything perfect. We're just using the quilting to divide our area up so that we can learn our designs. Okay, so we're gonna get started with the basic swirl design. And I'm gonna go over it kind of quickly because I've used it in the challenge before. I will give you some troubleshooting tips though that might help you become more successful with that design. I'm gonna start with a line that curls in on itself. And I'm trying to keep that curl nice and small. Think of like a nickel or quarter size. Once I get ready to run into my previous quilting line and then I'm gonna echo my way back out. With this design though, we're gonna stop before we run into anything else. So as my foot is approaching that previously quilted line, I'm gonna stop and then go into quilting my next swirl. Another nice curl, echoing back around and stopping when I get ready to run into something else. Looking ahead of the needle is gonna help me keep that echo line as smooth as possible. Of course, I could echo what I previously quilted and that's gonna help just ensure that I can move around and get where I need to go, especially if I'm working on a quilt like this. When it comes to quilting that first part of your swirl, the direction doesn't matter. They could point to the left, they could point to the right, really whichever way you quilt it is fine. I tend to have a habit of quilting my swirl away from the one I just quilted. And I don't know if that's because it's an easier way to do it or that's just how I do it. So as you can see, all my quilting is looking like a blob. I'm trying to keep everything nice and close together. It's gonna help prevent any gaps in the quilting, and I think that people will notice a hole in the quilting before they notice an error. So I'm keeping everything nice and close to what I've just quilted. Use echoing to help you maneuver around your area. You don't have to echo what you've just quilted. You could echo what you previously quilted. Whatever it takes to get where you need to go. But I am trying to make sure that the spacing between my echo lines and my quilting designs are the same. And that's what's gonna help give me that nice overall texture. To help keep my spacing consistent, I love to use the edge of the foot as a guide. What that means is as I'm quilting, when I quilt my first little swirl, and then as I come around, I'm looking at the point where my foot is running along that previously quilted line. And that's just helping to give me a guide to follow. So I'm looking ahead of my needle and just following. beautiful teal thread because it contrasts so you can see it on the camera. If you bought the coordinating thread collection, use the color that blends in the most. Another thing to think of when quilting your swirls is that you want to keep the lines nice and smooth. It will give it a nice texture and it'll keep any individual swirl from showing up more than another. Swirls are great as an all-over design, but they also work as a filler. Quilting them around an element of your quilt will really help show them off. Let's pretend that some of the dots on your fabric happen to be particular dots that you want to show off. What I could do is quilt it in the whole area except in the dot. So if I'm quilting along, I'm going to start my swirl, but I'm going to leave myself room to echo back out. Now that means I'm not taking it all the way to that dot because when I come back and finish the swirl, it's gonna come nice and close without crossing over. So swirl, plenty of room, and I'm kind of extending that swirl out to make it hit the edge, even if it means it has to get a little wider. Now when you're working around something like this dot, echoing is gonna be very handy to help you maneuver around. 
And here I have my marked line that's kind of dividing out the section that I'm working with swirls. So I have a smaller space to fill in. Maybe it's not quite enough room to add a swirl, so I'll just add some more echo lines. As long as it's the same spacing, it's gonna look fine. And then once you have room, you can go right into your swirl, stopping when you're touching that dot. Now if you really want to show off the dot, you can travel around it. If this were applique on a quilt, I would stitch around the outside. That's really going to make it pop. However, it's a little trickier to do that, especially around a circle, but this is the free motion challenge. This is a great time to practice. And this is a great illustration how quilting over elements of your quilt will help blend it into the texture or quilting around them will really help highlight it. So this is something I would do to an area that I wanted to show off, not something I would do to an area that I'm trying to hide. Now, let's learn a variation of the basic swirl where you can quilt it into irregular shapes by just adding a little hook. It's gonna start the same way with a line that curls in on itself. However, before I finish the swirl, I'm gonna quilt a pointy line that curves out, extending into space, and then echoes back. And then finishing the swirl. So the swirl hook obviously is one design, but if you think about it in two steps, it might make it easier for you to quilt. I'm gonna start with my swirl, but before I finish it, go out into my hook, echo back, and then back around. This is great for masculine quilts, for quilts that you have a lot of irregular shaped areas that you wanna extend that hook into. But I have discovered with this design, there's one thing that will make it a lot easier to quilt. When I'm quilting the hook, I want to keep it close to something else. Whether it's another swirl or the edge of the area, I'm keeping it nice and close so I don't have any gaps that I have to come back in and fill them later. Here you can see exactly what I mean about keeping that hook close to other quilting. I've quilted three of my swirl hooks and I've kept the hooks short, which is not going to really help me fill in any area. And I also haven't kept them close to other quilting designs. Now it's not a problem because I can go back and echo in and fill around it but it's leaving me gaps that I have to come back around and fill in later, and chances are quite good that I'll forget to do that. Another thing that will give this design a great Oliver texture is to keep the spacing between the lines of your hook the same as your swirl. That's gonna keep one element from showing up more than the other and just give it that nice texture. Here you can see I've quilted that hook a lot closer together and what happens is it makes it stand out more than the swirl and kind of draws attention to that area. Another thing to consider when quilting your swirl hook is to make that hook nice and long. If you're taking the time to quilt it, you might as well really extend it out into space and have it take up as much quilting space as possible. Especially when you start dealing with those irregular pointy areas like in between flying geese or other types of blocks like that or other similar kinds of blocks. So just save yourself a little bit of hassle and keep that hook nice and long, keep it close to other quilting designs, and try to keep the spacing as consistent as possible. Now how about that swirl hook? I love it as a filler, as an all-over design, but it's also great for borders. Use it in your three to four inch borders. By alternating the direction, it's gonna really fill in that area. Now, honestly, when it comes to quilting swirls, the number one common frustration is when you get a more squared swirl, or like we like to call them, squirrels. Now, you could just call that a mid-century modern variation, but it just means that you're not moving smoothly through that whole line. It's something that will work itself out over time, so don't get frustrated. Instead of being discouraged, look at it as that you're 75% there. Now it's your turn. If you're quilting along with me on the free motion challenge, in the center portion of your quilt, go ahead and quilt some different variations of the swirl design. You can quilt all of them, you can just quilt one, just whatever feels comfortable to you, and you can leave your questions in the comments below, or you can join our Facebook group and you can post them there. Well, have fun quilting and I'll see you next week. And so that you don't miss any of these videos in the free motion challenge, go ahead and subscribe.